In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your main character move and look around in first person without having to write any code. Instead, we're going to use Playmaker. Hey guys, Adam here from Pixel Mystique. I make games and I help others to learn game dev. This is part 2 of my first person level design tutorial series. For the rest of the videos, check out the link above and in the description below. Now you might be wondering, what does a player controller and camera setup have anything to do with level design? The short answer is scale and proportions. For example, let's say you design a section of a level where there's a long hallway or a cave that you want to invoke a claustrophobic feeling. You make a block out of the level or a gray box as some people call it and try to draft it out. But then you have to wait for the programmer to get the player character ready. And after that long wait, you start importing the player character into the game engine that you're using and walk around. Maybe you find that the ceiling is a bit too high and you don't get that claustrophobic effect anymore. Or maybe you find that everything is too wide despite you using common architectural measurements and standards. And that's why I've learned to have a basic player and camera setup when greyboxing my level. Basically, I can quickly check in the game engine whether my scale and proportions are aligned with the experience that I want to create. While programming skills can be valuable to you as a level designer or a game developer in general, if you're still new to game dev or even if you want to prototype things quickly, maybe you're intimidated by uh, programming itself, you can use a tool like Playmaker to accomplish this without having to write any code. By the way, if you're new to this channel, do consider subscribing to get game dev tips, tutorials, and inspiration. And hit that bell icon to get notified whenever I upload new videos. Okay, first, you'll need to get Playmaker from the Unity Asset Store. I'll leave a link in the description below. It's a paid asset, but at the time of this recording, if you're a Unity Plus or Pro subscriber, you get a special discount. Okay, to kick things off, let's start with creating the player character. Right now, there's this default scene that I have in Unity. And it's just got all the default stuff like main camera and directional light. I'm going to create a plane so that I have a basic orientation of where the floor is. And I'm just going to reset that to 0, 0, 0. Just another best practice that I like to follow. Next, we'll create our player character. And we're going to use a capsule to define that. Don't worry about how the player looks, this is just meant for prototyping and it's not re representing the final look of the actual player itself. So we're going to also reset this to 000, zero, zero. and then we're going to need a character controller to move this player. You can click on add component and search for character controller and then let's name this capsule as the player so that we don't get confused. And then next we'll need a camera, but in this example, since we already have a camera right here, let's just reuse this and let's rename this as player camera. For best practice, usually I'll create a camera group. So let's call this one, let's research to 000, let's call this one uh, camera base. And then you can drag the player camera under the player base. And let's also reset this to 000. So we're dragging the camera using the camera base itself. Now within the player itself, we'll want to have a designated position for the camera to snap to. So we can right click, create an empty object. Let's rename this empty object as camera position. So this gives the camera a place to snap. I'm going to use Playmaker's script or FSM to make that happen. I can just position this properly. Somewhere around here where the camera would be. And while we're at it, let's just position the player to be above the plane. Looks good. One more thing that we might need is a place for the camera to look at when we're using the mouse. 
So we're going to create another empty object. And we're going to call this player look at. Drag the player look at to be within the camera group. So imagine this being the destination where the camera will be staring at whenever we move the mouse. So let's place it somewhere around here. Uh, further away from the player. With these objects already in place, we're ready to now move on to creating Playmakers FSM or in other words, Playmakers scripts. Now let's set up the player movement so that when we hit the WASD keys, the player will start moving left, right, front and back. Before that, I always like to have the game view docked somewhere on the right so that when I click play, I can see what's going on here at the same time what's going on in Unity scene just because you won't be able to see certain things in the scene when you're completely looking at the game mode. So we're gonna hit to Playmaker and let's go to the Playmaker window. And the first thing we wanna do is create a Playmaker FSM. So select the player, add component, search for Playmaker and select Playmaker FSM. Imagine Playmaker FSMs as scripts for Playmaker and they are attached to objects so that you can tell the objects what to do and how to respond to certain things. You can rename these FSMs to make it more organized for yourself and it's easier for you to reference different FSMs in the future. So let's call this one FSM Player Movement. Now, if you look at the Playmaker window itself, it says right click to add FSM. What we already done that. So instead, what we're going to do is hit refresh. Sometimes it doesn't refresh. You can select everything else and then select back. And you'll see now there is a start state and a state number one. And also the name has been updated. So if it doesn't update, it doesn't refresh. Just click somewhere else and then click back in. Now, we're going to now go to this first state. We're going to start referencing this player game object as a variable game object. So this will tell the script or in this case, Playmakers FSMs that whenever we are talking about player object, this is the object that we are referring to. It'll make more sense later on once we have more than one FSM. So let's just rename this state and let's call it set player. And then within each state, there are things for the Playmaker FSM to do or the, for the script to do. And in this case, it's in the form of actions. We click the action browser and a new window will pop up. I like to dock this somewhere here so that I can have a look while working on the scene. We can search for actions. And in this case, we want to make a reference. So we're going to set game object. Let's look for that. Type in set game object. And whenever you add actions, there'll be times where it requires certain information to be filled. And in this case, it's compulsory to have a variable. So a variable is a container. Think of it as containers that contain certain data and certain information. It could be numbers, it could be uh, a yes or no state. And in case of Unity, it could be a game object that is being contained within a variable. So before we can even define what this is, we need to hit to the variables tab and create a container, so to speak. So let's call this one player object. Variable type will be game object. Click enter or add. And then we hit back to the state tab and we'll select this drop down as player object. And then we're going to drag the player into the game object field. 
when a script runs, it will first determine this set game object action and it will be basing what to connect and what to set based on what we've set here. After it's done, it needs to know what to do next. And once we have the player set, the next thing we want to do is add a transition. In this case, once it's finished, once these actions are finished, we want it to transition to another state. So we'll right click, add a state, and we want this to be the movement state. So let's call this movement. And then we can click, drag the finished event and connect it to movement. So it now knows what to do next. Within the movement state, as you can see, it's empty right now. And we'll need to tell Playmaker what to do when it reaches the movement state. We'll now set new actions. And the first thing we want to do is to get the axis vector. So we can search for get axis vector. And the vector is literally coordinates uh, in the game world. So there's X and Z, you can plot it X and Y. But in our case, because if you look here, we are gonna be using the red axis, which is the X axis in Unity, and the Z axis, which is the blue one. So this is why we're using this map to plane X and Z. Whenever you hover on anything here in the action, Playmaker will then show a description of what that action means. This is useful so that you always know what to do. Now, we'll also need to store vectors because then we can reuse that vector for other purposes. And it's also a requirement for this action to work. So we're going back to variables. This vector is gonna be, well, the format is vector. So select vector tree and then let's name this input vector. Now we go back to our get axis action. We now can select none, which is the previous default state. And since we have a new variable called input vector, we want to tell Playmaker to reference that variable. We'll also need to set relative to something so that when we're moving, it's relative to the camera. So, oops, we can click, drag the player camera and set it relative to that. You might need magnitude in the future, but right now I'm just going to ignore this field and let's set up the next action instead. The next action would be controller simple move. And again, there's a warning. We need to do certain things before we can use this action. We are going to reference the same variable input vector. So this is capturing the vector information the Z and the X axis. And this is then going to reuse that information from the same variable to then move the character. And there's a move speed of one here. Let's see how fast that goes. We're going to not touch that at the moment. So let's test this out and click play. And as you can see, the player is moving rather slowly, but it is moving. When we move around the mouse, it does not look and it does not turn. That's because we haven't set the FSM for the camera and mouse movement itself. So right now we've only set the WASD keyboard movements and that will move the character left, right, front and back only. Hey, before we continue, I just wanna make a quick announcement. I just set up a Discord server for Pixel Mystique, link in the description below. It's a place where I share more tips and resources for game dev. I also share various tools that I use. There's also channels for the community to contribute and share not only their projects, but also tutorials they made or if they find any online. You can also ask for help from the community when you get stuck in game dev 
and you can even find people to collaborate with, whether it's paid or just for fun. So do check it out. Now let's get back to the video. Let's set up the camera now and we're gonna make sure that the camera follows the player as the player moves around. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that the camera snaps to the camera position. So we're gonna select the camera base, which is the group for everything within the cameras. And then we are going to add an FSM. For this case, we can call this FSM snap to camera position within snap to camera position we're gonna select the state and we can rename this whatever you want uh, let's say just snap to camera snap to position maybe and then in terms of the actions we're going to start adding something called move towards. So this literally means you're going to move an object towards something. So within the move towards action, the first line reads game object and it's asking what object do you want to move? In this case, we say use owner because we are literally attaching this to camera base which is the owner of this FSM. So nothing needs to be changed there. The target object, or in this case, the target location, we're gonna say it's the camera position that's attached to the player. So we can click and drag that and make it a reference. So now the target object, or in other words, where you're gonna go to is the camera position. Uh, we can play around with these later, but I think this should be set to zero. And then we can already test this. Let's have a look. Yep, already the camera is attached to the player as the player is moving. The player movement is very slow. I'm going to adjust that. Let's hit back to the player. Let's change the speed to maybe five. That's a little bit better, but still very fast. And also, if you notice, there's no movement when we move the mouse in terms of turning the camera around. That's because we need another FSM to make sure that the camera looks at something, which is why we had this player lookout empty game object earlier. To make the camera move around, we're gonna have another action added to the player itself. Let's look for look at action. And then the target object would be player look at. We're gonna need another variable for the player. And this is going to be a magnitude. And it's gonna be a float. And let's call it Input magnitude. So then we need to go back to the action for get axis vector and under store magnitude. Right now it's set to none. Since we have a new variable called input magnitude, we can add that there. And then when you hit play, Next thing we're gonna do is go to player camera. So we're gonna tell the player camera to respond to mouse movements and look around. To do that, we'll add a new FSM. Let's call this camera look. And then within the state, you can call this 
look and we'll add actions here which will need a mouse look we're going to use the owner which is a camera to look around and maybe let's play with the sensitivity maybe tone it down or nah, let's just hit play and see what happens Oh, 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 we're falling off the scene. <laughs> so maybe, first things first, I'm going to increase the size of the plane. So that we don't fall off all the time. When we look around, you can see our own shadow. And right now the mouse look is inverted, but other than that, I think we're nearly there. Now to fix the mouse inversion, we can do a very quick fix, which is going to edit, project settings, and you look for input, and then you look for mouse Y, I think, yeah, and invert. move this a little bit bigger Let's select invert right here and then let's test this out uh, and now the mouse is no longer inverted we can move around we can look around we can play around with sensitivity it's still a bit too much let's tone it down Let's bring it down to five. So when we hit play, much better. We now have implemented using Playmaker, a first person player controller with a camera setup. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more game dev tips, tutorials, and inspiration. Thanks for watching, have a nice day. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. It is due to their generosity that I'm able to make more games and more videos like this one.